What's happening everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am DL Vince and today I just finished the show. Yes, today we're going to be talking about Invincible. This is the new animated series that's streaming on Amazon Prime. So if you guys have an Amazon Prime account, you can go ahead and watch it. Uh, if you guys don't have an Amazon Prime account, um, I don't know what you guys are doing with your life. I don't know how you online shop you know amazon prime seems to be the most efficient way to go so hey while you're ordering stuff online you can watch this uh cool show that's on uh prime video and you know we got the best of both worlds but um yeah so uh the first season uh just finished um this past friday as of this recording and um i wanted to give my two cents on it what did i think about it and um don't worry i'm going to be spoiler free for this review so I'm not going to go into you know massive details about the show I know for people that have already watched the show pe people are like oh man you're gonna do spoiler free yes because I think you know the best experience you know of watching this show is not knowing anything going in that's the best way to experience the show so that's why I'm going to be spoiler free I'm gonna try and be as detailed as I can about certain things, but you know, I'm not gonna give away big plot points and stuff like that. So don't worry for those of you who haven't watched it because I know there's still a good amount of people that haven't. And even, I think there's some people that's not even aware of the show. So don't worry, you, you guys are safe here. Um, if you guys want me to do a spoiler review of the show, um, go ahead and comment below. If you guys want me to do it, I'll do probably do a separate video um, going into spoilers. But anyway, let's talk about this. So, um, when it comes to Invincible, I've heard a lot about it. Um, I've never read it though. Uh, I kept hearing that it's a really great comic line. Um, it's from Image Comics. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not that big into Image. You know, it's either DC and Marvel, you know, the mainstream comic labels that people know. Image, I've dabbled into Image here and there, but not enough to be like, oh, I know a whole lot about it. Like, I know of Spawn and Savage Dragon, and that's pretty much it. Um, but, you know, Invincible is a, is a title I kept hearing a whole bunch of times online, and if, even some of my friends knowing about it. Um, so I just never got the time to buy the comic line. Uh, but when I heard that they're doing an animated series on the comic, I was thinking, yeah, that's perfect. Perfect for me to actually get into this, um, to get into this comic, just, you know, seeing it in an animated series so I don't have to worry about, you know, finding the comic books wherever they are. I don't even know where to get them. I'm sure, I'm sure it's easy to get them online. It's probably on eBay or other stuff or it's probably other comic stuff online. There's not enough comic stores where I live. Um, so I don't know if it'll be easy for me to get all the issues, but, um, yeah, I was very excited to watch this show. Um, so I heard that, um, the writer for the show, Robert Kirkman is going to be, you know, working a lot with the developers of the show, which that's great, you know, to get the actual develop, the, the actual writer of the um, comic to, you know, p have some input on the show so it won't deviate too much from the source material. So I appreciated that. And then I also heard that Seth Rogen was producing the show and I was like, hmm, that's very interesting. Um, that kind of made me a little weary because uh, if you guys don't know, the last superhero show that he produced was The Green Hornet, which wasn't that good so I was kind of skeptical about him being attached to this but you know hopefully he won't make the same mistake twice so I'm willing to give it and give it a shot um when it came to the trailer it looked pretty basic it looked pretty straightforward um it looked like just another superhero show that you know has more blood and guts um you know it just looked like another typical superhero show so you know, from face value watching the trailers, I'm like, I don't know why people are getting so hyped about this. This seems like very straightforward. It seems like stuff I've seen before. Um, but, you know, like I said, I was willing to see what, what's all the hubbub about it. Um, for those of you who are wondering, no, I haven't watched The Boys on Amazon. I heard a lot about that. That's another gritty, dark, you know, realistic take on superheroes. I just, 
I don't know. I just didn't have a whole lot of interest to watch it. I know it. I know a lot of people are saying it's good, so I probably will give it a chance in the near future. But yeah, just so I don't have anything to compare it to. Um, another thing, um, Robert Kirkman is the writer of um, The Walking Dead, so I guess that kind of shows why he his like that style the style of um invincible and walking dead seemed very similar because they had the gore and stuff like that i haven't really watched walking dead so i don't really know the whole style that robert kirkman would give that you know that's similar to walking dead i'm not sure but you know judging from the blood and guts i'm like okay that that kind of makes sense so you know let's just see what happens um so my overall thoughts on this show is it's damn good it is damn good man i i love this show it's so so good um one thing i'll say uh, up front the voice the voice acting for this show is really good um one the standout of course is um jk simmons playing omni man i thought he was absolutely great um jk simmons i pretty much like him in anything that he's in and i thought you know his voice that he gave to uh, omni man it really fit you know has that sophisticated you know type feel to the character um and just you know he just made he just made the character really complex and i thought jk simmons pretty much was a standout for um voice acting but also the voice actor for um invincible um aka mark um, Stephen Young, I thought he was really good too. Um, I really liked the character of Mark slash Invincible. Um, he was very relatable. Um, you know, at first, you know, when the when the show's beginning, like you know, it, it does go through the typical tropes of you know a boy trying to figure out his superpowers and stuff like that. So you go through the typical teenage adolescence with him, but it's it's all very endearing with him. You know, he was very likable. He's very charismatic. Um, you know, I did he really, you know, help us help bring the emotion to the um, show because, you know, the whole the sh whole show is revolved around him. And I thought he was great. He was really good. As I said about uh, the show feeling really familiar, like I will say, like the first the first episode, it, it does seem a bit familiar. Like, as I said, it did, did feel like another coming of age type of story like you've seen that many times before and like with spider-man and stuff like that and that's what it felt like it felt like a mixture of spider-man superman and kick-ass with a hint of sky high in here because you know omni-man is invisible's father in this show so it, 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 the first the first three quarters of the first episode it, for people who haven't watched it before i know that's probably something that you'll think about it first but but just keep just keep watching because by the time we get to the end of the first episode that's where things changed that's where it started to go into into directions that i was i didn't even see coming like that that's what's the best thing about this show without going into spoilers like what's what's really great about this show is the overall the world building of this show like you know, it didn't need a whole bunch of other characters from different image properties, you know, other superheroes from other comic lines. They didn't, they didn't need to have it in the, in this one because, like, there is such a huge, massive world in Invincible. There's so many fleshed out characters and so many different environments and civilizations. Like, it's a whole bunch of, a bunch of um genres that they put into this um into this show even though it mainly it does feel like you know a science fiction superhero film that's what the core of it is but like there's so many things that they put into this show you know that you don't typically see in superhero movies today like it goes from being a typical coming of age superhero film to it's it's a crime drama it's a murder mystery it's a science fiction epic it's like they put all this into the show and it's just really really interesting and as i said there's like so many characters that they establish in this one season alone and it just made it made the world seem so much more vast and much more engaging you know and it didn't feel overwhelming either even though they were introducing a lot of characters and a lot of planets and there's aliens and all that stuff that there's no spoilers because you know that's that's in the trailer so i'm not spoiling anything but it's like there's a whole bunch of aliens there's some already superheroes that are established there's already like teams of superheroes there's other alien civilizations there's just so many cool things 
about this show that I really liked. Um, but as I said, like, Standos was Omni-Man. Um, you, you, like, I'm not to spoil, without getting into spoilers, like, the evolution of this character throughout this show is just, it's crazy, it's insane. Like, he goes from being this, this, you know, this iconic figure that everyone knows, like, he's, he's pretty much known as the, the strongest superhero there is. And then his character goes in a completely different direction by the time we get to the end. It's just so, so cool. And just seeing how Mark reacts to all of this stuff happening, it's just, it, it just made me feel for him even more because like there's so much thrown at Mark's character in this show. You know, it's like you really feel for him and it's like, it's a lot of pressure because he's just learning to be a superhero in the show and just a lot of stuff is thrown at him and I just, I really felt for him. Um, I would say the standout characters for me are Adam Eve, um, Robot, um, Battle Beast. I'm not going to spoil anything about Battle Beast, but when Battle Beast comes in, wow, just, just great, just awesome. Um, but yeah, I pretty much enjoyed all the characters in this show. I think every character is fleshed out and you know, you, they're really engaging and they're really sympathetic. Um, I would say the one, the one character, well maybe two, but the one character that I thought eh, was, was fine was um, Rexplode. Um, he wasn't really that interesting to me. He was kind of annoying in a couple of moments. By the time we get to the later half of the episodes, he starts to get a little bit more likable. But like the first half, I was just like, oh my god, he's just such a dude bro. And like, he just seems so douchey. Um, but as I said, he goes through an arc in this show. And you, you, you feel for him more as a character by the time we get to the end. Um, one other thing is um, Mark's love interest. Amber. Um, I did like Amber as a character overall. Um, I wasn't aware. Apparently they, they race swapped this character from the comics. Um, she's a black girl in this show but in the comics she's a white girl with blonde hair I think. Um, that didn't really bother me that much. Um, for people wearing that it felt woke or stuff like that. I didn't feel it personally and I wasn't even aware of the race swap thing so it didn't bother me. But um, even though I did feel for the chemistry between Amber and Mark, uh, there was just a couple of like annoying teenage relationship stuff that I just wasn't really digging. Like I know they have to go through this stuff, but it's just like, I don't know, just, just some things when it came to a secret identity where I was like, it just it was kind of irritating at first, but like overall I did, you know, I didn't want them to be together. I was rooting for their, you know, relationship overall. There was just a couple of things that that bothered me about certain plot points when it came to their um, their whole relationship thing. So as I said before, this show is really violent. So for those of you who have seen, you know, what the characters look like, yes, they're in bright colors and it seems very Spider-Man-esque and it's about this teenager getting superpowers. So just for those of you who are, you know, wondering if this show is for kids, it's not at all. It is not for kids. It is not even family friendly. This is an adult show. It is it is bloody, it is violent, it is intense. So one thing I would have to warn for people that have sensitive stomachs or you know can't take a lot of intense imagery and blood and guts and stuff like that, I would be wary watching this because it does get intense in this show. I'm not gonna lie to you. It gets really, really brutal. But, you know, I, it didn't bother me because, first of all, I'm used to blood and gore in most stuff. But I also felt like when they did get intense and bloody, you know, they did it in the right places. It didn't feel, it didn't feel too gratuitous. Like, whenever they decided to get violent and bloody, it served the story. So that's one of the things that I appreciated because that's one of the things that wasn't really interesting to me. In watching the boys because it just seemed like it was trying to be adult and bloody for the sake of being blood and bloody and adult and even like other shows like Titans that you know seem to be violent just because even though it doesn't serve the story but in Invincible I felt like it served the story whenever they were being violent it just it wasn't too much but for those of you who are sensitive to that type of stuff I would be weary about it but even then I still recommend watching this for people who haven't but just know it's not for the faint of heart. But um, but yeah, that's 
pretty much my spoiler free thoughts on Invincible so I'm just gonna say I highly recommend you guys watching this show if you guys haven't seen it already um yeah, I, I can't recommend it enough. It it feels unique to you know other properties like DC and Marvel. Like it it's it's carved out its own lane. That's what I appreciate because like even though I'm enjoying you know stuff from DC and Marvel, it's nice to have something that's different from that. You know, Image is trying to make a you know a rise, and I think was it Valiant Comics or. Yeah, I think Valiant Comics is trying to do some stuff as well, so it's nice to see other comic properties trying to get their properties out there in the mainstream and entertainment. And, you know, I think this is a great, great show for people to get introduced into Image Comics. But overall, it's just a, it's a great show on its own, so I definitely recommend it. Um, so I will give Invincible greatness. It's such a great show, I can't recommend it enough. But um, that's my thoughts on Invincible. What did you guys think about Invincible Season 1? Did you guys love it? Did you guys hate it? Did you guys think it was okay? Comment below and let me know. But um, if you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And um, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that bell if you want to be notified on future videos I'll be doing. But uh, that's all I have for you guys today. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.